We saw there might be an opportunity to add some metal products to our business that would require a fiber laser to engrave or mark them. We didn't want to spend a fortune until we tested out our ideas to see if they would be profitable, so we bought a CloudRay 50 watt fiber marking laser from Amazon. We'll put the link in the description below if you're interested in seeing the exact model we got. We were definitely not experts when it comes to lasers like this, so there's definitely going to be a learning curve. It'll burn your face right off. In this video, I unboxed the laser, put it together, and did a test engraving just to prove it works. As you can see here, the laser came in a wooden crate. After opening it, I took out all the components. They were all packaged nicely in foam. I spread out all the components so you can see exactly what came in the box. There were no assembly instructions. Shocking, I know. There was a somewhat crappy video on the manufacturer's website, but assembly was pretty straightforward. I started by attaching what they call the lifting column onto the work surface with the included screws. The galvanometer unit, at least I think that's what it's called, needed to be screwed onto the lifting column. The method to do that wasn't great. You have to get those little sliding screw mounts aligned with the holes and hope they don't shift on you. I've got to believe there's a better way to do this, but whatever. It didn't take too much fiddling to get this attached. The laser came with two guides that can be screwed into any of the grid holes shown. I just attached them to the top left of the grid for now, but we'll probably move them later once I figure out how we're going to set this up to use pre-made jigs. Plugged in the power cord and foot pedal. The foot pedal lets you activate the laser manually instead of having to click a button in the software. I'm not sure it's something we'll be using though. Finally, I plugged in the USB cable that will connect to the computer. You'll notice there's a receptacle on the back that says rotary. This is where you'd plug in the rotary axis motor so that you can engrave around a part while it rotates. We saved a little money by purchasing a laser unit that didn't include this part as we don't see a need for it right now. It can be purchased separately though, so we might get it later if we decide that we just can't live without it. Here's what the finished setup looks like. To save space, the laser was connected to an all-in-one computer that I got from a government auction for next to nothing. Hooray! I'm still pretty happy about that, but a laptop would work pretty well here too. I installed the USB driver and the EasyCAD software that the manufacturer included on a flash drive. I then pulled in our logo into EasyCAD so that I could run a test on the laser. The laser also came with a handful of coated aluminum business cards to use for testing. I'm sorry Michael, but they've disabled my right front tire. I didn't show it, but the laser was focused by moving the lens up or down until the two red dots merged into one. Then the frame of the design was previewed so that the part could be aligned correctly. I marked our logo on the blue card with the default software setting as a starting point.
It didn't look like the laser completely removed the coating, so I made a few software tweaks and ran it again on a black card. This one came out a lot better. I want to mention a few things in closing. Right away, just from running this one job, I could see that using the included EasyCAD software wasn't going to work well for our workflow. CloudRay did say that this laser would work with Lightburn, so I later changed over to that software after fighting with changing out USB drivers. We had opted for a 50 watt laser with a 300 millimeter lens to give us some reasonable power with the largest engraving area. After a little more research and given the size of the products we'll probably be offering, I think we should have gone with a 110 millimeter lens. We probably also could have used something more powerful like 100 watt so that we could get some serious speed and engraving depth. So we're considering this laser a test unit to see if it will add value to our company. What we learned from using this version will help us determine what we'll really need to get when we inevitably buy additional units. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. The laser came with this little tightening lever doohickey. It's not listed on the parts list, and for the life of me, I can't figure out where it goes. If anyone knows, can you comment below? Thanks. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments what you think and what projects you'd like to see us tackle with our new laser. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notified of future projects. We have more videos coming soon. Stay tuned.